Hey everybody, Billy here with Emacs. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Uh, today we got something cool for you. Uh, there's a lot of Hawk 5s out there on the market. Um, and you know, even though the LS motors are a fantastic motor, um, there's gonna come a time where if you crash or if you just feel like upgrading your rig, um, that you're gonna need to you know, swap out some motors. And so in today's video, we're going to show you how to upgrade your Hawk 5 <laughs> with our brand new RS2-2306, I'm sorry, 2206-2300KV. It's the exact same motor uh, spec-wise, uh, but the RS2 does have some upgrades. It's got the titanium shaft, um, the single windings, um, so it is definitely a, a, an upgrade to the LS motor. Um, it's got the upgraded bearing as well. So uh, yeah, we'll dive down close and I'll show you guys uh, just some little tidbits, little uh, tips and tricks on how to swap out uh, your motors on your Hawk 5 and give it uh, a little spruce up, a little uh, little update. All right, so first thing I like to do, uh, grab my handy dandy tool, is uh, whenever I'm dealing with the motors on the Hawk 5, uh, because of where the stack is located and that top deck here, I like to take the top deck off, just kind of free up some space, some workspace for you. So we'll remove these four top screws, get that top deck off. And you may want to remove the standoffs. Um, I've done it before without removing the standoffs. You know, when you need to change a motor at a race or whatever, and you just don't have all the time in the world to work. But uh, if you're doing this at home and you got some spare time, it wouldn't hurt to just get the standoffs out of the way as well. That way you can get to the solder pads a little more quickly. Um, now I will say, when you're soldering your motor wires, you want to make sure you have a good soldering iron. Um, I'm going to recommend at least 60 watts or better on your soldering iron. Uh, a real popular soldering iron is the handy TS100. Uh, it's a great portable soldering iron. You can power it off 3S, 4S. But So I got the top deck off. I'm going to go ahead and remove the camera. That again is going to free up some space uh, where the waters get wi wires get soldered. Uh, the next step is I'm going to remove the standoffs. So there is a press nut where the standoff is located. Um, some of you guys may not have taken apart your Hawk fives just yet. Um, now, also keep in mind, guys, this this video. If you're a seasoned builder, uh, this video is probably not for you. Um, you know, if you're just getting started in the hobby and, um, you know, you, you're a little intimidated about soldering a motor on or, or something like that, this video is definitely for you. So, um, you'll also see, I'm not the best solderer in the world, but I can get the job done. If you want to learn, you know, little tips and tricks on like professional soldering, uh, there's tons of videos out there on YouTube for that. Um, this is just kind of real basic soldering, just kind of what you would do in the field when you don't have all the, the preparations and such. All right, so I got the standoffs out. Now be aware, with the, the standoff screws removed, uh, you only have one screw now holding the arm in place, so you will see the arms kind of pivot around on that one screw, so be weary of that when you go to put the screws back in. So the next step, uh, I'm going to go ahead and free up the motors. Um, now on this particular Hawk 5, uh, we're not using our famous fabric tape. We're actually using heat shrink on this. Um, so we're going to go ahead and cut the heat shrink off. And after the motors are installed, you can actually use our fabric tape then to reattach the wires uh, and secure them back down to the arms. I'll show you guys our new fabric tape uh, when we get to that point. All right, so there's two arms freed up. Also, I want to mention um, for some of you new guys, um, you may not have a good set of tools yet. Um, so if you're new to the hobby and you haven't invested any money in some, some new tools, I uh, definitely, definitely recommend picking up some good, high-quality uh, hex wrenches. Uh, what I have here is uh, just a regular quarter-inch drive 
wrench, but I've got one of the best tools on the market uh, made by MIP Tools. Uh, thanks to Matt Olson over at MIP for taking care of us on the tool side. Um, be hard pressed to strip one of the MIPs out. All right, so we got the wires freed up. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and start removing the screws from the motors. That way we can pull the wires away from the board. And again, you, you wanna make as much room as possible when you're down <clears throat> with your soldering iron and, and either unsoldering or soldering your wires. Um, the reason why I say that is when you've got a crowded space and you're trying to solder and, and be accurate with it, if it's crowded, you can run the risk of, you know, like flicking the wire. And if the wire flicks and you've got, you know, melted solder at that point, you're gonna flick solder all over your board uh, and things like that. And that just can cause a lot of havoc for you, um, especially if it gets all over the, the PCB for your flight controller or your ESC and starts you know, arcing components or bridging components and such. So again, when you're soldering down on those pads, make a lot of room for yourself. So, all right, we've got the four motors freed up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to straighten out the wires so that I can see, I don't know if you guys can see that, but so I can see each of the solder pads, nice and clean, nice and free. Uh, anytime you do any kind of motor install, you want to make sure that the motor is spinning in the correct direction. Um, stock out of the box, the Hawk 5 has propellers spinning inward. So also make sure when you check your motor orientation, that they are spinning inward. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the new RS2 motor. Uh, believe it or not, the RS2 motor is actually lighter than our light spec, and we also have the titanium shaft. So that definitely lends itself to making a lighter motor, but there's our beautiful RS2 motor. <clears throat> so my soldering iron's good and hot. What you want to do when you're getting ready to unsolder some wires. Now again, I'm no professional when it comes to soldering, but I know the basics, uh, so please, if you are a professional, hold back from <laughs> tearing me apart on my soldering skills. But basically, you want to tin the soldering iron. Make sure that you have even flow of solder all the way around the soldering iron. That way, the heat uh, spreads across evenly on that solder. So once you've tinned your soldering iron, what you're going to want to do is just kind of place it right on top of the solder joint that you want to remove. Just kind of let the solder iron, soldering iron do its thing, let it melt. Don't yank on the wire or anything like that. Because once you've heated up everything, it should pull off nice and easily. Um, what I like to do in between each wire is actually clean off the tip a little bit. Because I believe the solder starts to oxidize after too long. And then I'll retin, make sure everything is nice and covered on the tip. Get this wire out of the way and I'll go in for motor number two. Now again, don't yank on the wire as you're heating up the solder joint. What you don't want to do is rip the pad off of the circuit board. You just kind of give it a light pull as everything is melting. It should just slide right off. So that's wire number two. So for me, the trouble is always this left side as I'm right handed so I don't get the cleanest shot at it. But uh, again, just kind of place the soldering iron right on the joint, nice and tinned up. Let the heat do its thing. Give it a slight little pull to see if it wants to come out. Don't yank. And there we go. The wire comes off. So we got one more wire to go. Other things to uh, pay attention to. Um, You'll notice when you're unsoldering your motors, the FETs are just past those solder pads. So again, if you're using those chisel tips, um, sometimes that chisel tip will get into those FETs. So you want to be real careful that you don't get any solder down into those FETs because then you'll bridge those feet and could render your ESC board useless at that point. So just be patient. Let the heat do its thing. 
I'm gonna go ahead and pull out all the brand new motors. Again, these are the uh, same motor size, same KV as what's on the Hawk 5. Um, so that way you can still take advantage of using uh, the fantastic Avon Flow that comes with uh, the Hawk 5. Um, when building the Hawk 5 and, and designing the Hawk 5, I should say, um, you know, the Avon Flow and the 2206 2300, uh, that, that was the motor prop combo of choice. Um, and as you guys know already, obviously you own the Hawk 5. It's, it's, it's my favorite setup. It's also just a fantastic setup for both racing, freestyle. Um, so that's why we're putting those right back on to this quad here. Um, and again, as I mentioned, I'm going to be leaving these wires uh, at full length. They should be just about the same size. Nope, they're going to be a little bit longer than the stock wires. Um, so it's up to you guys. Uh, if you guys want to shorten them, uh, you just want to make sure that when you do shorten them, you retin the wire. Um, and so what I'll, I'll go into quick upy closey on on how to tin. Um, so basically. If we just kind of pretend that this wire is bare, right? We've removed the sheathing, we got bare wire. Um, basically what you're gonna do is make sure you got a nice clean soldering tip. You're gonna tin up the soldering iron. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna place the soldering iron onto the bare wire and you're gonna let the wire heat up to the point to where when you touch the wire with the solder, the wire is going to start absorbing that solder directly into the wire. And so what you want is a nice uniform uh, tin, and it's going to look a lot like this other wire here where you don't see any bare strands kind of like hanging out or anything like that. Uh, you want to make sure that all the exposed part of the strands uh, look like it's just one big solder piece. And what I'll do next is just to kind of make sure everything is secure, I'm going to go ahead and mount the motors first, and then we'll start soldering on the wires. Clean up my workspace here a little bit. Um, so when you're bolting up your Hawk 5, um, if you decide to use different screws or anything like that, you have to be very wary of the length of screw that you're using. Um, what you don't want to happen is the screw to be so long that your screw is gonna go into the wire. Uh, you do have exposed wire on these naked bottom style motors, so if you use too long of a screw, you're gonna send that screw right into the windings and you're gonna short out the motor, and that's bad, very bad. So what I'll do is just kinda put the first one in Start lining up the rest of the holes on the motor. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can use Loctite. Um, you know, I personally, I check my quad after every run. Uh, I don't feel that it's necessary to use Loctite. Uh, we don't use Loctite at the factory, so uh, again, that's up to you if that's something you want to do. Another thing to keep in mind, if you do decide to not run the same exact motor on your Hawk 5. Say you want to try something different, different size motor, different size KV. Um, you might want to uh, rethink your prop situation as well, especially if you're going into the higher KV uh, motors. The Avon Flow was kind of the sweet spot for the Avon Flow, which is the propeller that comes with the Hawk 5. Uh, it's right around that 23 to 2400 kV mark. So if you're going to go into those higher kVs like the 2550, 2600, 2750, um, you're going to run the risk of overamping, uh, which is going to decrease your flight time. Uh, you could possibly do even more damage. Um, so keep that in mind. If you like the Avon Flow as much as I do, I really, really love the 2206 2300 with the Avon Flow. Uh, according to the engineer, that is 
its happy place. One of the things I also wanted to kind of go over with you guys a little bit was motor choice and why you would want to choose a, a given motor. Um, many trains of thought on this one as well. Uh, general rule, so like if you're looking at the 2206, 2300 kV, which is what comes on here, versus say like a 2600 or a 2750. Um, with, with the higher kV, you're going to have those higher RPMs. Um, so it does kind of change your, your throttle man a little bit. You're going to have a lot kind of more zippy uh, of a motor. So it's going to feel a little more poppy. Um, but with that higher RPM, um, you are going to get a little more amp draw, especially if you stuck with the Avon Flow. Um, so if you do go to the higher KV, uh, you definitely want to go with a less pitch prop. That way you'll allow the motor to reach those higher RPMs quicker. Um, and again, that's going to give you that, that little bit poppier feel. Not that the 2300s aren't poppy. Um, you know, it, it really boils down to preference, what you, what you want in your, in your throttle feel. Uh, sometimes even track designs can warrant different setups. Um, you know, if you're looking at, say, our 2306, 2400 kV motor, um, that's a very popular motor, by the way. Um, kind of the motor of choice for freestyle pilots because with the 2306 size motor, it's got a lot of bottom end grunt. So, you know, guys are carrying their GoPros around and so they, they don't want to feel that extra weight on their quad. So they go with a, a bigger motor. Um, but that does come at an expense. Uh, 2306, it, it's going to you know, more power, you're going to have less, a little less runtime. Uh, also depends on how you prop it, how you fly it, you know, kind of like driving your car. If you got a heavy foot, you're going to get less gas mileage. So kind of the same thing here with quads. If you're banging off the top of the stick all the time, you know, you can expect to see less flight time than if you're flying smoother and, and things like that. So, um, all right, so we got all four motors mounted up. So now we're going to go ahead and start soldering the wires. Um, keep in mind, you do need to reverse two of the motors. So motors two and motors three need to be reversed. There's two ways you can do that. You can either do it at the wires and it doesn't matter which wires you crisscross. It's just any two. So you just, you can take these two and crisscross them, you take the first two, it doesn't matter, just as long as two of the three wires are crisscrossed, uh, that will reverse those motors. Um, and again, on the Hawk 5, it is done through the wire out of the factory. Um, so if you want that cleaner build, you can wire them up so that they're all three straight in line so that the wires look nice and neat on the arm, but you will need to go into the ESCs through BL Heli uh, and again, there's videos of that stuff, um, and you can reverse them there. But I'm going to go ahead and do it just as we did at the factory. So two and three are going to get reversed, so I'm going to go ahead and start with three. Um, and for some of the newer guys that are kind of just getting started, if you're looking at your quad from the back as if you're sitting in the pilot seat, your motors are numbered like this, one, two, three, and four. And so motors two and three are going to be the ones that are reversed. Um, and even knowing that, I still, once everything's soldered up, I always, always, always check the rotation before putting props on and actually going out and flying. So definitely get in the habit of that. So here we are on motor number one. And what I'm, oh, looks like my soldering iron went into sleep mode. So I'll give that a little second. The TS-100 is pretty quick. It's going to heat up pretty fast, so it won't be too long. Uh, what else can I go over? Oh, so, you know, since I'm waiting for the soldering iron, uh, if you want it, if you wanted a more racier look on your Hawk 5, um, not that the carbon fiber is not racy. I mean, carbon fiber has always kind of had that racy feel to it. Um, we do have this pretty cool canopy. Um, it's called the Mayday canopy, specifically designed for the Hawk 5. Um, we do have these available on our website. Uh, some of the dealers also actually have these as well. So um, 
this would just basically replace your carbon fiber. Uh, it kind of gives it that racy look. Um, it's got this fin on it right here. Uh, it does give it that kind of bird feel. It looks like kind of like a tail feather type thing. Um, but what this does is in a racing environment, um, a lot of times you end up upside down when you crash. So this fin here kind of gives you a pivot point um, if you're using the rollover feature in beta flight. So as you're upside down, kind of gives the quad that ability to rotate. So when you go into that flip over feature um, and you go to roll over your quad, you have that pivot point. So really cool canopy. Um, again, it is available on our website. So if you wanted that racier look, we do have a few different colors. So uh, you can dress up your quad according to your favorite color. So my soldering iron now should be nice and hot. So motor number one, that's going to be a non-reversed motor. So we're going to go directly uh, one, two, three, just as the motor wires come out from the motor. So what I'm going to do, even though these wires are tinned already, what I want to do is heat up the solder that's on that wire so it makes it a little easier to get the wire to soak into the solder pad. So I got a nice tin going. Now that you just saw right there, that can be a little bit dangerous. I, I should have been a little more careful on that. Luckily the wire went over to the side. But as I mentioned earlier, if you flick solder and it gets onto your components on your board, that can be a little bit dangerous. Uh, I just happened to get a little lucky on that one. So uh, make sure you got a good hold on your wires. So wires tinned, the pad is tinned, my iron is tinned. I'm just gonna put the iron right on top of the uh, wire, let the wire melt or the solder on the wire melt. And then as that solder on the wire melts, it'll then heat up the solder on the pad and you'll see both sections of solder just kind of joined to be one. All right, so there's two. Um, so what I like to do, just so that I'm not doing things and making everything feel super monotonous, when I get like two or sometimes I even when I get one, I'll just kind of tidy things up right away. Um, and as I mentioned, we're leaving these wires full length um, just because that's, that's kind of how I like to do it. I'm not, I'm not a weight weenie, so I don't mind that little bit of extra weight. I'd rather have the extra wires so that in the event of a catastrophic crash, which I seem to be very good at, I'm not going to rip anything off the pads, hopefully, or a little less likely. So here I got our brand new fabric tape. This is... Uh, same tape that is used on like our Baby Hawk Race uh, and things like that uh, has really good strength to it. Um, we use it to secure the wires to the arms. Uh, it has that really clean look to it. A lot of guys like to use uh, electrical tape, which is fine. Electrical tape works well. Um, but if you just want that cleaner look to it, this tape is pretty awesome. It is pretty durable too to like propeller strikes. Um, so if you have like longer arms or, or you know, if you kind of look at where your propeller might strike your arm, uh, you might want to put some of this tape so that those propeller strikes don't cut your, your wires on your motors. So what I like to do is just kind of flatten out the wires, make sure that they're all kind of in line. And I just put one strip, that's all I do. couple wraps around the wires. That's all you need. And there you go. You get a nice little clean setup on your arms. Again, this tape is available at emacsusa.com. It's about $4.99, I believe, is what it is on the website. I think this is, uh, I guess, 100 foot or so. It's a lot of tape for $4.99. All right, so there we go. There's four brand new RS2s. We'll get this tape out of the way. 2206-2300s on your brand new Hawk 5. That's a gorgeous motor. All right, so we got the motors installed. Now we'll just go ahead and get the rest of our quad put back together. So we've got to make a little bit of room with this wire to get the camera mount in there. 
I like to plug the camera in before I actually put it down on the plates. Okay, so one thing I, I forgot to mention, guys, if you guys are going to be wanting to install the Mayday canopy, um, one is you won't need these side plates as the camera is going to mount directly to uh, the 3D print. Um, and you also notice that this area up front where the standoff runs is a lot shorter than normal. Uh, so you will need to run the 10 mil standoff that it comes with. So keep that in mind uh, when you open up your Mayday package. Make sure you don't lose those 10 mil standoffs that, uh, that it comes with. So, so on the Hawk 5, we've got the, the press nuts um, built into the frame. So you want to do is you want to make sure you get these screws in first into the press nut and get the, that pressure built on the press nut. And then what you'll do is you'll actually screw in the standoff afterwards. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to remove a standoff by itself while attached to the top plate. While all three others are attached, it could be a difficult task putting it back in uh, because of the way that press nut operates. So again, get the screw in first get it nice and snug and then we snug up that standoff alright so a cool thing about the Hawk 5 uh, if you guys haven't noticed already uh, it has the ability to run the 30 by 30 uh, stack which is what the Magnum all-in-one stack is but you also have the ability to run a 20 by 20 stack uh, if you guys haven't heard already we have an awesome new stack that just hit the market recently and it's a 20 by 20 6S capable uh, Magnum stack. It's called the Mini Magnum 2. Uh, also, again, available on uh, emacsusa.com. But uh, the Hawk 5 can accept that stack uh, in the event that you had a bad crash or something and uh, you're looking to upgrade your stack as well. So, uh, fantastic new stack from us here at Emacs. Um, as I mentioned, 6S capable, uh, has 32 bit ESC. Uh, the VTX has uh, smart audio capability now, uh, so no longer will you have to use the button to change your VTX channels. Uh, you can now do it through your OSD uh, and your radio. So if you haven't checked that out, check it out. It's, it's the happenings. All right, so we got the antenna on, standoffs in, wires all nice and tucked away. We'll go ahead and get that top deck on there. So again, same thing here with the camera side plates. You gotta make sure that they get into those slots on the top deck, which we got. And we'll take our little strength plates, I call them. Put those guys on there. We'll tighten this guy all up. Now this was a bone stock Hawk 5 out of the box. Um, so some of you guys that may have your antennas already mounted to your top plate and such, um, you will have to unclip them from the zip tie to have accomplished this. Uh, you'll see that my dipole is just kind of hanging there still because it did come right out of the box. All right, there you guys have it. That's the uh, motor swap motor upgrade for the Hawk 5. Uh, if you guys haven't done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell button for us. Um, also follow us on Facebook, social media, uh, and also Instagram. So uh, hopefully again you guys enjoyed this video and this helps you guys out. Um, we'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah.